Hey, welcome to PureMind.com. Thanks for checking out this video tip in Pro Tools. Today we're going to look at how to add a sub to your kick and tune it to the key of your song. <clears throat> so I just have a basic 3-4, four, 4 bar or 8 bar rather, drum loop here. Let's check it out. All right, there you have it. So obviously this doesn't actually have a key yet because there are no melodic instruments yet. But let's pretend we have a key. Let's say that we're in the key of D. Whether it's major, minor, does not matter. All that matters is, would be the tonic. So <clears throat> D, of course, co any note corresponds to a note value, or hertz, rather. Uh, each note value corresponds to hertz. So if you want to find that, Google pitch to frequency. Peabody, here's a good one. Copy this picture. Make go, here you go. Go Shift Command 4 if you're on a Mac, and boom, copy that. Put it on your desktop. You'll refer back to this a lot. Good Bible here. So this lays out when A is 440, every note everywhere that you might use. Well, not everywhere, but everywhere useful enough. So for a sub to your kick drum, you're almost always going to use this row. Now, sometimes you might use this one, maybe 65, 69, but usually this is going to be your most useful, appropriate subtone. Once you get down here, you're starting to get too low for it to be very audible and usable on all systems and all that. So this is your row right here. So <clears throat> if we're in the key of D, that would be 37 hertz. So if we want to apply that, we can come back here and say, okay, well, <clears throat> I'm going to make a signal generator. Shift Command N, I'm going to make a new mono uh, aux, actually. So Command Down to go aux. And we'll go plug in other signal generator. And as so soon as I let go here, it's going to squeak at us at 1,000 hertz. So let's mute that. <clears throat> so here, I'm just going to go type in 37. And then if we unmute this. Ah, right. Much nicer. We'll call this kick low. <clears throat> but what we need is for this kick low to not just sit there and hum, but to go along with this kick here. So what I want to do is take make a send from this kick, some mono send, pick one. I'm going to, if you made it and it looks like this, which you might have, first of all, let's right click and rename kick chain. We want to make this a pre-fader send, little p lit up, just crank this sucker up. And we did it again pre-fader, so it's not linked to this. So we can mix this however we want, but this will still just stay up all the way and going to trigger our gate eventually. So then we want to go back and on this track, this just humming, make a gate. Plug in, I'm going to use something everybody has. Here you go. <clears throat> so... Now, remember, this is just sitting here, playing away. I'm going to grab that same kick chain bus right there, capital. I've done this more than once, obviously. So then, right now, this will still be humming away. But as soon as we turn on this key, now it's waiting. So now if we solo this, let's see how that sounds. Sounds like a mess, right? Because we need to tighten this up. So we're going to turn the ratio all the way up. We're going to pull the threshold back a bit, and actually the range will turn all the way up as well, like so. Then now if we hit play, it's a little better. Let's turn it up a little bit. So if we go back and click on the signal generator plug, just turn this up. Give it a little more juice. Go back to our gate. So that's OK. Now, a lot of times I want the attack and release to actually be pretty fast, but then it gives us a snap, like... So to solve that, we can put an EQ after our gate. Turn on the high, or the low pass, rather. Roll this down. Now we have a really clean sub. Now one more little step. This is layered with this, so let's listen to our two kicks together. So this kick, our actual printed audio file kick, I want to make sure that it doesn't have, or it doesn't have 37 hertz just in it that's rubbing 
or canceling with this 37 hertz here. So what I want to do is put an EQ on this kick track and I'm going to notch out that exact same frequency that I'm pushing in with that signal generator. And now this can be a cool counterintuitive thing here, and let's tighten up the Q, that if normally you figure I'm going to pull down bass like that and it will lose bass. But here when you've got them playing together, a lot of times you'll hear that it actually feels like the bass gets fuller or cleaner. Check it out. I think that applies here. We didn't feel lots of bass go away. In fact, I thought when I really got a ton of bass out of there, you could really hear this cut through. So this is a cool thing. Now we have this kick that has very little bass in it that we might go and now we can treat and compress more and do other tricks with it if we want to. And then we have this low that's in the key of our track all by itself. And we can of course then adjust, oops, not the pan, but the volume of that as well when we're mixing. So we have a lot more control, nice beefy low to our kick, and it's in tune. There you go. That's our tip. Hope you liked it. When I first came to PureMind, I had searched the forums and I had searched online, I had read magazines, I had talked with people, but it wasn't enough. What I needed to do was I needed to watch someone mix, start from scratch, and make their way up to a professional project. I take them through all the steps and break it down, piece by piece. I want them to understand how sound interacts in the environment, number one. Number two, I want them to understand how instruments behave in a room, how to capture those instruments. Here's a microphone. What does a microphone go to? Here it is in a real world environment. Now let's go back to the classroom and dissect that. After a certain amount of time within the core program, you have access to the studios, right? And you have access to the microphones. And you have access to just bring in whoever you want and record. The first two Tumbleweed Wanderers EPs, they were both uh, completely tracked here. I brought my band in. We set up drums, you know, did overdubs. Uh, I had other PureMind students on board as engineers, and uh, we had a really, really good time tracking those songs. There's a lot of hands-on experience. You get to see bands get recorded. You get to be involved with setting up the mics, the miking techniques you know, the compressors, how everything in a studio flows. It's good to have that, that knowledge and the hands-on experience with the professionals that have, that have done that kind of work. There's no shortage to what you can do. It's a supportive environment that says, here is a space where you can be creative and mess up. And not only will we not judge you for messing up, we'll applaud you in those efforts. Mm -hmm.